apparently an interview. I'm not 100% sure exactly how it goes, but it's mostly just text. But this video was posted 22 minutes ago, and it has, I believe, the official channel of Sons of the Four. So I'm not 100% sure. I wish that if they didn't have an official channel, they would somehow get an official channel, but I'm pretty sure this is the official channel. So that's the only reason why I'm clicking on this video. So let's just see what is going to be happening for the future of Sons of the Forest. Oh, also his microphone kind of like makes this click sound. It's not me. It's his microphone makes this click sound. I, I, I can't fix that. Kelvin and Virginia, for that matter, scale poorly into the late game. Will N Knight allow the player to give Kelvin slash Virginia more commands or other things to do? If not, will we see more companions in the future that add more variety? We have big plans to keep adding tasks Kelvin can complete. Some ideas in progress are having him help construct a wall around your base or fortify slash repair the base when needed. That's good. In Virginia, we plan to add more to her AI, particularly giving her more bravery if she has a weapon, and also depending on how many mutants slash cannibals she has killed. Oh, that's also good. Yeah, make her progress as the game goes forward into the late game. That's fair. So at first, she'll kind of be like hesitant to shoot the cannibals and whatever else. But as you're getting to like the like 50th day, she'll just straight up just boom, bam, boom, headshots and shit. Maybe not like insta kill, but you get my drift. That'd be pretty cool. Who is the character we play as? Will we get more background slash lore on them and the other characters in the game, such as Kelvin, Eric, and Timmy, etc.? I don't know who Eric is. There will be lots more lore and story pickups as well as extra cutscenes and new areas that will work to expand and flesh out the story. Good. I like that. I'm going to assume that Eric's the guy in the white shirt or white coat. I don't know. Will we see improved gore slash dismemberment mechanics? It's not currently on our list of things to add, but always looking on ways to improve the effects. Of course. Uh, the way it is now is perfectly fine. What happened to the various scrapped ideas of the game, such as Kelvin's original name of Robbie, in the night vision goggles, solar panels, climbing axe, battery charger, etc.? Mm -hmm. Lots of features are partially in and will be coming in future patches. Kelvin actually had a few different names over his course of development. We originally called him Zombie Boy, then Robbie, which is what we referred him internally, and finally. See, what, what probably happened there was they went with Robbie Boy, I'm Zombie Boy, and then they switched to Robbie because it was like Rom, Rob Zombie, so someone likes metal probably in their group. That's what just I'm assuming. And then they went with Kelvin. Kelvin. That's most likely what happened though. Does N Knight plan to add faster forms of transportation? I hope so. We do have what we think is a really cool idea for this, but I don't figured. want to go into details in case it isn't as fun as we think it might be of or course. doesn't work well with the environment. Of course, yeah. Listen, if you just add a golf cart, that's fine. That's perfectly good enough. <laughs> okay. But if it's not a golf cart, I hope it's something badass. But of course, if it doesn't flow with the game, then it's... I expect at least a golf cart. How does N Knight plan to Or maybe a helicopter. You know that helicopter? There's an area on the map where there's a helicopter. And I'm not sure if they use that for the end game screen, which is whatever. But there is a helicopter somewhere, and you could probably use that. That might be just a, a hint, maybe, but I don't know. cheating and griefing. We've seen forms of griefing such as killing companions and other players. True. It's hard to plan this online. This is always really tricky. Our mm. hope as developers is that people just be nice to each other, but unfortunately that isn't what happens. Mm. We added the trust system as a base tool to handle playing in public open servers. We will also be looking into some ways to limit griefing risks and expand tools for hosts. Okay, well I can tell you right now, you just put a... You put a PvP setting where people can't blow up other people's bases, but it'll still make the owner be able to destroy his own stuff if he needs to that's what i would do however there would also still be griefing because someone would probably build in your area so you'd probably have to get like uh a little building zone and put it on the ground and that would be your zone so it'd be like x amount of squares or whatever is, is your zone you'd have to make it like a rust thing kind of thing that's pretty much the only way to stop griefing is that way Is anything planned for the forest after full release, such as updates to VR and bug fixes? Currently, Probably not. we are focused on making Sons of the Forest a yeah. really good early access experience for players, and we'll decide on future plans once the early access process is close to complete. Yeah, someone wants to play the forest on VR, that's fine, but uh, they're on Sons of the Forest, they're in early access, 
their focus is going to be on Sons of the Forest for quite a while. This was a question frequently asked by the community. Is a console port planned for after full release? We would be really excited to bring the game to PlayStation and possibly Xbox after their early access period, but we do not currently have any firm plans. Right oh, now, that's not good. Now we just want to make this the best PC game we were able to. So you might not even be able to play it on Xbox and PlayStation. That's going to suck for those guys. Uh-oh. I assume that at some point they most likely will. There's no way that they wouldn't, but I hope that they do. That's for sure. More people to play with. But who knows now? That's not good. Many players are asking for features, but they may already be work in progress. Mm -hmm. Could we be given a roadmap of features and additional content coming in the future that you can currently share? This will prevent many repeated requests and improve the overall community experience. That's okay. <laughs> we don't want to promise features that might not make it. Exactly. We'd also like surprising players with cool stuff that they might not be expecting. Mm -hmm. We do read all the comments and feature requests and try to implement the best fitting ideas. Of course. Of course. Oh my god, bro. <laughs> no, it's not a no. Uh... No, yeah, yeah, it's basically a no, but End Knight probably likes to work on one thing, and if that thing doesn't work out, they'll scrap it and work on something else. That's most likely what they do. The best fitting idea, you know? Oh my god, bro. Yeah, I don't want no roadmap. Just say, hey, there's an update Will coming. Will be an expansion Good on the crafting system? Currently, what you can craft is very limited. Of course, I hope so. There will likely be new items you can craft as we see what items players want and what would improve the game. Mm -hmm. How does End Knight plan to improve the pacing of the game? Players are finding the GPS system to be locating the entire story for them immediately instead of over time which would give more incentive to build slash explore. Of course. People have suggested possibly adding a compass and the ability to mark points of interest instead. Yeah, well I, I believe that... I believe that they will do this at some point where they'll just say, here is your GPS. And then as you walk past stuff, it'll mark it on the GPS. And I think the only reason that the icons are in the game currently, except for like the GPS locators, because you have those three purple dots, those are going to stay there no matter what. But for the caves and other stuff like that, as you walk past them, it'll mark it on the GPS. But I think the only reason why they have it set up this way is because they want people to get further into the story and see what the players are going to do themselves and this is the whole the whole part of testing so of course i believe that they would implement the whole exploration thing after some time we have a bunch of ideas we are currently discussing internally but we don't have a perfect solution okay we do agree it's an issue that some players are just running all the way to the ending instead of living slash existing in the world no of course yeah I just want to say that people are going to do that no matter what. You got YouTube videos, you got content creators that just do the, like speed runs and stuff. No matter what happens, even if it wasn't on the GPS, somebody would eventually find a way to get to the end and then other players will just progress to the end based off of that video. So it doesn't matter. Either way, people are still going to do it. If they want to do it, they'll find a way. Will there be more building options? Currently, the freeform building, while very unique, is also very limited in what you can actually do, such as the ghost blueprints. The freeform building is limited? Ah. Uh. How is that? How is, how is freeform building limited? Have you not seen the builds that people are doing on YouTube? What are you talking about? There will be new ghosts added, as well as improvements and extensions to the freeform system. Okay, well, I'm not aware of that. I wonder what that is. I wonder what I wonder what that guy specifically is doing in the game to have limited building because I, I have no idea. I'll, I guess I'll find out myself when I start to build too. Does N Knight plan to add more enemies and mutants, or change the ones currently within the game? Some players have expressed how little they seem or how little variety they seem to have. We have at least one character that wasn't ready for the first launch, and there may be others we add over time, including variations on some of the current enemies. Okay. Well, variations are 
So this yeah. is going to be the only question that I personally speak on because this is one of the biggest things I was actually looking forward to. I really wanted to see more enemies in the game. I would say maybe the one character they don't have ready is either Sluggy or the end boss because Sluggy can be spawned through console commands that are unofficial, mm -hmm. but it doesn't really do anything. It just walks around and kind of runs into walls and it doesn't attack. But also okay. there's a file called n underscore boss dot bank. Oh. So there is an end boss confirmed, so that perhaps could be the character as well. We have yet to see. Okay. Well, I hope I hope that there is definitely more mutants in the future. Variations of mutants is, you know, meh. Because variations are variations. They get, they get boring and stale after a while. Anything that uses reskins of the current uh, enemy or whatever is just boring. Like Destiny. Destiny uses constantly new variations of the same fucking enemies. That game is so boring. <laughs> no development at all. <laughs> cannibal Holy camps crap. are currently very small, and other than fighting the player, the cannibals don't actually do a lot when it comes to their own communities. Will we see an expansion of their camps added over time? I hope so. We do have plans for this, such as adding more ambient actions for the cannibals to do around their villages and also vi visual improvements such as more types of structures they can live in to give the different camps more variety. Nice, I like that. I'm kind of wondering what the main cannibal camp is. When will support for dedicated servers be implemented? This is something we are working on in the background, but we don't have an exact date yet. Of course. Does the team plan to add additional building materials and a robust crafting slash cooking system? Cooking system, that'd be cool. We do have a prototype of a more advanced cooking system mm -hmm. and it will likely come into the game in a future patch once it's further developed. Nice. Well, not the robust, but the cooking system, yes. This I want. Now I can actually cook ramen noodles. I do know in the game files there is a pot confirmed. Yeah. Uh, similar to the pot in the forest, so of course. yes. Why was Early Access announced so late? What are the plans after Early Access? We really struggled with deciding if we would delay a further 6-8 to eight months or release an Early Access and have the community help us get the game to the finish line. Mm -hmm. We had such a good experience with our first title in Early Access that we eventually decided that this would be the best idea. Of course. Yeah, why so Why not, you know? I don't even think this guy watched- oh, I'm gonna- I'm gonna wait, hold up. Of course, like the first game, I wasn't there for the Early Access of the forest. I was there much later. But from what I've heard, it, the early access was extremely good. And of course, if the early access your first time around was good, then you just stick to the same plan you did for that early access and you implement into this early access and you continue on with that. Most people that don't understand how the developers of this game work don't understand that they've already made a game and they've already done the same exact thing in that game. So I, I anyway. Oh, in my personal opinion, I actually think this was their best choice. It was. After all, definitely I was. find the Sons of the Forest very fun, even mm -hmm. though in its incomplete state. And I believe that if they delayed it a fourth time, it would have sparked Oh, it would have. People would have just came out and said, this game doesn't exist. It, I guarantee you there would be a whole bunch of people coming out and saying, this game doesn't exist. It's been delayed a fourth time. You know? Asian, I lost a lot of hype for the game. Mm -hmm. One thing I like about the early access is it actually brings me back to when I was playing the forest in alpha around like 0 0.11 early 2015 and mm -hmm. I would be hyped for every update. Of course. And now I'm getting that feeling back. Of course. Now that Sons of the Forest is out and a new update's coming around seven days from now. Of course. It's just bringing a lot and I'm really glad to see that they're taking community and suggestion feedbacks. Yes. Stuff like that from us. It's a really good deal. Best thing they could have done was just release it. Will we see more wildlife, such as bears and wolves? That is an excellent question. We don't currently plan on adding bears or wolves, but possibly other animals. Oh, well, that's okay. This one came off as a little bit of a disappointment to me. True. I ex not, ex not exactly expected to see more forms of hostile wildlife, but I'd like to. I would have liked I'd to like as to well. I'd like to see like, wolves maybe came more out in the winter to hunt for food, for food which not only inc included you, but also the cannibals. Of course. Cannibals would maybe hunt wolves or be hunted. Of course. While bears hibernated in the winter and would come out in the spring in the spring. to look yeah. for fish and salmon. Oh. And if they saw you, they would go after you as They well. would go after you. Yep. Cannibals. Yep. Oh, imagine how good that could have been if they added just wolves and bears. That would have been so good.
But they're adding other animals, so I kind of want to know what those are. What will the bi-weekly updates look like? Will it be quality of life, or will we see the addition of new things and improvements over the game? I assume it would be additional We will likely alternate between two to four week patches depending on what we are trying to get in. Okay. Each patch will include different things from further story slash cutscene additions, mm -hmm. the new features and items along with lots of bug fixes and other improvements. Nice. So it could be literally anything, basically. I like that. Expect the unexpected. Has the success of Sons of the Forest made the team evaluate how far they want to take the game and maybe even push back the 1.0 release? We have a rough estimate of 6 to 8 months, but we'll be constantly reevaluating as the development progresses. We really just want to make the coolest game possible. Of course. Mm -hmm. The developers said in previous interviews that they wanted to do DLC and Workshop. Is the workshop still priority and is DLC still planned for post launch? DLC would be nice. We should be able to talk about this more further into the early access period. Of course, okay, so they're. They don't know. They don't know yet, yeah, yeah. They're discussing it between themselves. I hope that there's DLC, that'd be dope. How does the team plan to expand on hunting slash survival aspects of the game? We do have some ideas, but nothing concrete we can share yet. Okay. Will we see more prefab buildings and stuff from the first game, or will everything be new? We're trying to add mostly new stuff, but if something that was in the first game makes sense and is fun, we are not opposed to adding it. Of course, yeah. The the This development team likes to not focus on stuff in the past. They like adding new stuff to their new game, of course. But if something is really popular, they'll try and implement it and whatever else. You read what it, you read what it said. But of course, if something is really popular, like hotkeys, for example, then yeah, I think that they should add the sled back and they should make Kelvin push the sled to get locks. That's what I think. That's that's the only thing I want in this game because you have to do everything building wise one by one uh, with the freeform system. So it takes a bit longer to build stuff. So I, want, I would at least like the sled to come back. Will the island slash environment be expanded upon to make it more challenging? I would there assume so. There will be so. updates to the environment throughout the early access period. Yeah, of course, yeah. This one is not red. Will the log sled make a return? Okay. <laughs> this is one of the really cool things about early access. Internally, we didn't realize how much people really liked the log sled, uh -huh. and due to the amount of bugs it had in the first game, we were not sure if it was worth putting back in or not. But in the last week since release, it's become more clear that it's something that players miss. Yes, you have you have to put the log back, even though there's glitches. Please fix the glitches over time, of course. But put the log sled back in the game, please. I think a lot of people should really realize that the game is in early access. Mm -hmm. And at the time of this interview being released, we haven't even seen the first update. No, we haven't. We should all give it the chance that they deserve to yes. really show off what they have in store. Exactly. The you, you, like, the success of The Forest was so good, I don't understand how people can just hate on something right out of the gate. I was disappointed, but I didn't, I didn't hate I didn't hate anything, but I was disappointed with the building because I wanted to focus on the building mainly. So I was disappointed in that regard. However, once I actually started playing the game and going through the game and realizing how much game the game had to offer in its current state, I was satisfied with it. For us. At least that's what I believe. What mm -hmm. do you guys think of the interview? Just go ahead and leave it down in the comments. Of course. Yes, of course. I was extremely like, they did this same process in their first game I'd, I wouldn't be surprised, you know, if it's if it's not successful in the second game, I'd be shocked. But let's just scroll down to the comments because I actually read a comment. So I'm assuming that this is the official channel of them. And then you got this guy who doesn't know any better right here. See, this guy has played so many early access games that his mind is all gooped up and <laughs> doesn't understand. You know, uh, they lied about it getting released as full, switched to early access at the last minute, knowing people would still buy, thinking it's full, done, and just needs some polish. Then released an empty shelf, an empty shell of a walking simulator and cashed out. They kept a few things in their pocket that could be pushed as updates to make it look like they didn't scan everyone when they add when they abandoned it in a month. Zero credibility for this channel now pointing out the most asked questions. So this guy clearly didn't even watch the fucking video. <laughs> okay. Uh clearly didn't watch the video. He probably added this last minute. But clearly didn't watch the video, and I, I I made a comment myself down here. I'm not gonna read it. You guys can read it if you want to. 
here it is if you want to read it this guy has played so many early access games and got scammed so much in his lifetime that he's just he's just done different friends uh same motions to recollect items over and over and then you know they always be able to take your character with you to other servers what well why are you playing on so many servers why don't you just play on one server what are you doing well, that's because valheim valheim does it because it's a uh, it's a uh, mmorpg well no it's an rpg well i know i'm pretty sure it'd be mmo if you can put it to other servers i don't know but mmo like you're supposed to level up in that game what how many servers are you playing on <laughs> that's that's the question i have and anything added to the building menu always gets a thumbs up true you know to collect artifacts and paintings that we could decorate that's true this person has a really good idea you should put that in the suggestive area of uh the steam community that would be good surprise they are hedging their bets on workshop i feel like art made a really good point of showing that some of the best content comes from the community and if you le leverage that correctly it can spe speed up development tremendously of course but at the same time you have other games like you know seven days to die where they have the workshop and they solely rely on the community to keep their game alive because that game is fucking boring there hasn't been any it's been in early access for like nine years and what what's changed in it really you ask for a credit i will make sure that i credit for you there you go sir you're most welcome very needed is an npc invincibility toggle it's the same logic as structured damage you could potentially lose hours and hours of hard work and permanently have your base deleted by a single cannibal left unattended i think that's fun it should be a choice it's the reason why it's fun is because people don't make absurd bases you know they make bases that in the end are supposed to be destroyed so they can recreate the base because it's a survival game it's supposed to be surviving it's not fucking minecraft okay the base at some point you're expected to lose you have to make another one rebuild the one you current have expand upon the one you current have it's a survival game that's exactly what it's for it's like conan you can make absurd bases in there but you should always expect it if you have the settings turned on you should always expect it to be destroyed that's why i don't make big bases in survival games because it's, there's no point because i expect at some point for the base to be destroyed and i want to be able to make the base as strong as i possibly can to see how long it holds out it's like in the first four it's how people just build these massive structures and they'd have cheats to do it there's, there's not doing that legitimately they'd have 100 percent cheats to do it they're building these massive structures and it's like why would you live in that when you're playing a survival game it doesn't make any sense to me but people play the game how they want to play the game and that's fine with me i can understand why you'd want this a thing especially being able to talk toggle this especially this i 100 percent agree with this no matter what that i agree with 100 percent. the only thing you would have to do is just turn off the cannibals that's that's it just turn off the cannibals or you turn off building construction there's two ways around it the npcs you can get back but you have to like go into the freaking coding and do it that way they should add something to at least get it back one time i don't know why people keep saying remember the game is an early access when it's been delayed twice okay you realize that most games get delayed that are also in early access plus it's been delayed three times it was about to be four okay but most early access games get delayed i don't know if you know this i don't know if you're new to gaming but this happens all the time but the game is complete enough to release it it, it functions pretty well but i think that a lot of people jumped on sons of the forest because it was the most talked about game for sure and then the content creators jumped on it because it was about to pop off and it did it literally broke steam the first day i couldn't even buy it my expectations were pretty much met the only thing that i didn't like was the lack of building and the lack of blueprints that's the only thing that i didn't like however everything else so far is pretty solid they should have like a horde thing to be honest from like seven days how they have uh the blood moon events they should have something that eventually comes and attacks your base most games have that most survival games have that anyway but for the most part it's just a it's just a regular survival game and the story is just a bonus there's only two indie companies that i trust currently and that's face punch which is rust and end night which is the forest so i look forward to seeing what they're going to do with this game and how they're going to develop the story and i have so many questions about the story that i have not yet answered and of course they're probably going to do more with the map because the map is just so massive well it's not like massive but it's pretty big and there's not really much to do with it and i also like that i can see something and go to that thing so if i want to if i see the top of the mountain i can go to the top of that mountain and i can turn around and look at like 
the raft on the boat or uh, on in the water and i can go to that raft in the water i like that i like not being limited by invisible walls it's so annoying when you're playing an open world survival game and there's just all of a sudden a random wall like of course it's like water you can't go past the water of course but it's still like it's you get my point right it's still really good anyway i've been rambling on for too much <laughs> uh, i hope you enjoyed this video i do have some more videos coming out if you want to see some more like comment subscribe all that good stuff i'm going to subscribe to this channel because and i'm gonna give it a like because uh well the developers seem to respond to this channel and that's fine with me so i'll just see what happens you never know all right so leave a like on this one subscribe for more and i'll see you guys in the next one take care and bye bye